All right, moving right along, let's get into a little bit more of an advanced view application. We're going to go get real data from a, a real API and show it in our templates. Now, this is really exciting stuff because now we're starting to see view become an actual application. What I have chosen for our demo app, I've been using it a lot in demos and uh, different applications recently, is the Giphy API. Now, if you're not familiar with Giphy, uh, G-I-P-H-Y dot com, let's go take a look. Giphy dot com. Basically, it just gives you a bunch of random GIFs. You can search for GIFs, all that good stuff. So we're pretty much going to create something like the Giphy homepage in view. Now, to get started with the Giphy API, let's head over to the developers portal they have, developers.giphy.com. And you can use their API to build whatever applications you want using any GIFs that they provide. Very, very fun API to use. Now to get started, you're gonna need an API key, and this is how you're going to authenticate with the Giphy API. And this is what they need for you to access any information that you want to get GIFs. To do that, go ahead and log in. I already am logged in, I believe, yep. Now here I have two sample apps, and once you just go ahead and create an app up here in the top, you will get an API key. Now these you don't want to hand out to anybody. You don't want to show people like I am showing you all now, but these are sample apps, so it's totally fine. And also in the code that you downloaded at the beginning of this course, I have one of these API keys already commented in the code, so you can just go ahead and use that. All right, so we have all this. Let's start working with the API. And if you want, you can browse the docs, here, there's some really good ones. The one we're gonna start with first is this trending API. So we hit trending and we find out the host is api.giphy.com and the path is v1 slash gif slash trending. And I'll show you exactly how you use all of this in about five seconds. And then here, the required parameter is API key, which we now have since we have an application. We'll go back to the code. Uh, let's split this out to the right. Very good. Now, here's our starter kit for this app. We have our data variables, which is an API URL, and that's that API host that we have, and then the path that we have. And that's the API host right here, api.giphy.com slash v1 slash gifs, and that's gonna start everything for our URL requests. And I also have an API key here, ready to go. Let's create a method called fetch gifts because that's the first thing we want to do, right? We want to show uh, the trending gifts that are going to come back from this API endpoint. Let's go a little bit wider. And here we're going to say fetch gifts. Now, this is interesting because you can use a couple different ways to make HTTP requests. And this is one of the best things about Vue. It gives you full freedom to choose whatever you want for whatever scenarios. It doesn't really lock you into an HTTP library or anything like that. You could use Axios, and that is linked at the top, and that is the full URL there. Now, this is linked at the top. You could use Axios. We could say axios.get, and then you could pass in the URL goes here, and then that returns a promise, and then we'll have data from there. What I will use here, we could use Axios, or we could use the JavaScript fetch method, and this is kind of one of those newer JavaScript functions that we have. We'll use fetch. Fetch, and then you pass in your URL and it returns a promise and you say dot then. So let's build out the URL for this. The URL for this is gonna be this right here, right? Slash this right here, slash trending. And then a requirement is that we pass in the API key. So we API underscore key is equal to, and then this whole thing right here. So that right here is going to be our URL for visiting this Giphy endpoint. And let's take a look, make sure that works. Copy that, paste that here, enter. And notice we get our data back and we have an array of GIFs. So we have one GIF, two GIF, three GIF, very cool stuff. And it's just that easy to use the Giphy API. We'll come back over to the code. And if you're wondering how this is formatted, I have a Chrome extension, what's it called? JSON formatter. And you can just download that from the Chrome extensions and your JSON, if you ever show JSON in your Chrome browser, it'll look nicely formatted like this. 
All right, so we need to build out this URL here every single time we do a fetch gift. So we say const URL is equal to, and I'm gonna use ES6 template backstrings. So backticks above the tab on the left side of your keyboard and dollar sign this dot API URL slash trending API underscore key is equal to this dot API key. And that is our URL. That's going to create this whole thing right here. And you might be wondering why didn't I just, you know, code this in and paste that in right here. Uh, one, I think that's a little long. And then two, if this ever changes, let's say we wanted to go to V2 or something like that, there would be multiple places in our code we'd have to change. So this is good because now we have one single place for this to get pulled from. So we have this URL. We're going to fetch that URL. And one thing with fetch is it returns it and, oh, well, let's console log the show. Console.log. Now notice this probably won't do anything for us because we actually never called this.fetch gifts. Console. Yep. Nothing there. So we have to call fetch gifts. And where should we do that? Well, we're going to use those lifecycle events that we just learned about. So we have methods, fetch gifts, and then we're going to have created is a function. And inside of here, this.fetch gifts. So we're going to go grab gifts as soon as we land. Now let's come back over. We have our response, which is a fetch response. And this is an HTTP response. So now we have to unpack the body of it. And to do that, we're going to say dot then response. And we're going to say response.json. No, the response, this response object right here has a method for grabbing all the JSON data. And this is just how fetch works. So we'll save that. And now we're finally seeing that data array that we saw when we visited the URL directly in the browser. Now we have it in our application. So we have an object that has a data property, meta, and pagination. And we have 25 GIFs in here. So we're going to say, let's go grab all that. We'll have the data here. And I'm doing an ES6 function. We're going to say data. Well, let's console log the data real quick. And that's just going to be this data array. So now we have this data object, but we need the dot data inside of it. So this is a little bit of a weird syntax, but we'll say data dot data. Save that. Now we finally have our array of GIFs and here they are. So to show those, all we have to do is bind this data dot data to an actual variable that we have. We'll say this dot GIFs is equal to data dot data. And we'll remove the console log. And since we are now having this dot gifts, we need to generate that here. Gifts is null since we don't have it when we start our view app. All right, let's see. Now we have everything we need. We have our gifts variable, which is null to start. We have our fetch gifts method, and then we call fetch gifts here. Now, the last thing we need to do, we have all our data handled. We need to show this in our application. So we'll say div, and let's make sure we only v if there's gifts. And then also v4, we're going to repeat gif in gifs. Image source is equal to, and let's actually come at this out again, console.log data.data. I just want to look at the GIF object that we have. Well, let's do the first one just so we can see. Okay, so now we have one GIF and look at all these things that come back from the Giphy API. It's a little bit overkill, but let's see. We probably want, where is it? Images, which is an object. And then we want the original. And this is just from me browsing it earlier and finding out which exactly I wanted. And the URL, that's the one we want here. Okay, so we're going to say up here, source, and we're going to say vbind, or if you want the shorthand, just colon source, gif.images.original.url. And look at that. Immediately, our application starts to show off all of the different GIFs that are coming back from the Giphy API. Very cool stuff. So... What have we done in this lesson? There was a lot going on. 
we've basically just used all of the tools that Vue gave us, and now we're starting to apply it to an HTTP request. All we have to do is go grab an HTTP URL. We're going to fetch it, or if you wanted to do axios.get, and you can do that as well. Fetch only works in the modern browsers. It doesn't work in Internet Explorer, so for full backwards compatibility, go ahead and use Axios. And we've got that data. But here, you know what? We could even one-line this and make it even cleaner. There we go. So now we have fetch data, and then we bind it to this.gifs. And immediately, since we're binding it and Vue is completely reactive, it will automatically update the template up here. So this is the flow of Vue applications here. Set data, define a method, and then use it on your lifecycle events. And immediately, your views will follow all of the instructions that are given to it.